Our next guest says the U.S. is trapped in a cycle of zombie engagement with Beijing, in which America tries uh, to keep uh, talking, and China keeps doing pretty much whatever it wants. Joining us uh, right now is Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin. He chairs the Select Committee on China in the House. So what do you think the answer is, to disengage? No, I think it is to, first of all, dramatically enhance our military deterrent, particularly across the Taiwan Strait, so that we prevent a conflict. Uh, and right now, I worry about the increasing risks of conflict, which you guys know better than anyone, would be incredibly devastating economically. But then, and perhaps most difficult, is to get about this business of selectively decoupling. I say selectively decoupling in key areas so that at a minimum, we can start to reduce the leverage that the Chinese Communist Party has over us. What I'm worried about, as I allude to in this op-ed, like a zombie in a horror movie rising from the grave, is that we're going back to this idea that we can engage with China and induce them to act responsibly, but instead we see rising aggression across the board. And our fear of provoking Xi Jinping leads us to self-deter. It leads us to shelve key defensive measures that we need to take. And beyond the fact that engagement as a core pillar of our strategy has not worked for 30 years, the problem with the zombie engagement, in my opinion, is that the Chinese Communist Party exploits our ardent pursuit of meetings and photo ops as an opportunity to advance their totalitarian and often anti-American agenda. So when filtered through the ideology of a Marxist-Leninist regime, that olive branch we constantly extend becomes an invitation to aggression. So we need to be smart, we need to be strong, but we can't get lulled back into this idea that economic engagement will somehow induce the CCP to become a responsible stakeholder. Congressman, but what ultimately do you want? Is it, is it a fear that they are going to uh, ultimately do something demonstrably damaging to the United States? Is this a issue about democracy and human rights that you think that we are supposed to be succeeding and we're not? What, what is it? It's primarily, well, in the near term, my concern, as I alluded to at the beginning, is about the risks of a conflict. I mean, look at Ukraine to be reminded of the fact that, as the old saying goes, war is hell. Deterrence is hard, but war is hell. So a conflict with China over Taiwan, even one in which <coughs> the free world is able to deny them from establishing a lodgment on the island, would be incredibly destructive. So deterrence is the near-term goal. Over the long term, my concern is for democracy. It's for freedom. It's for our ability to say what we want without fear of an economic retaliation by China. It's increasing economic coercion across the board. It's the perfection of a techno-totalitarian regime that we're seeing play out in Xinjiang and all across China and that model being exported around the world. It's what your co-host alluded to before. It's, just, it's their ambition for global domination and a world in which China sets the rules as opposed to the United States is a very dark world that we do not want to live in. How concerned, though, are you that right now the risk for American businesses uh, to increase their business and potential business opportunities in China is being limited not by China, but by their fear of the government in the United States? I, I don't agree with the premise. I mean, look at what China's just done in, in recent months. They raided the PRC offices of three separate American firms. They targeted Micron in an effort to destroy its China business. They rebuffed Secretary Austin's attempts to establish a crisis communication channel, and they nearly collided with American forces in the air and at sea during unprofessional attempts. I think we have to realize that for years now, it is the Chinese Communist Party which has been trying to decouple from us uh, from the rules-based international order. What is made in China 2025 but a very intense and sophisticated strategy for decoupling? I'm reminded of a framework that a, a Chinese author laid out for decoupling. First, wean yourself off critical dependencies. Second, make sure your foreign adversaries can't spread their propaganda through digital platforms. Third, don't let adversarial governments buy up frontier technologies or critical infrastructure like ports. The author of that proposal was a policy wonk named Xi Jinping. That is the strategy right. he is pursuing right no. now. So we need to recognize it and counter it. Ours is a defensive strategy against their aggression.